Starfield and other Microsoft games, things like Indiana Jones and Hi-Fi Rush and Hellblade 2, could be coming to PlayStation 5. This is massive news. It comes by way of Xbox era. The Hi-Fi Rush in-game assets sort of confirm this, as well as the rumors that that have already existed around a Sea of Thieves port and now leading to Starfield as the next big candidate to jump over and be available on PlayStation 5. Which, by the way, just saying, uh, if you haven't played Starfield and you, you're excited that it's coming to PlayStation 5, I would uh, be cautious. Just gonna say that. But yes, the general news seems to be Xbox is shifting gears and they're going to be releasing games on PlayStation 5. But in all of the memes, all of the hype, all of the conversations that are happening around this news, especially since it's something about console wars in a way, it's always going to be filled with memes and just a lot of short-sighted commentary of, ha, PlayStation wins, Microsoft bad or something. We lose sight of a lot of the important things that can come from this and what are the potential timelines, what are the possible consequences, because some of them are good and I think many of them are very bad. So I want to talk about that in today's video, which by the way, hi, I'm Mug Thief. I make videos here on the internet. If you already knew that, it's good to see you. And if you're new here, welcome. Hope you enjoy the video. And if you do, hit the like button. It's the best way for it to reach a wider audience. And because we're talking about this, I beg of you, please come into this with an open mind. It's not about who wins. This isn't a fight between these two giants. This is a question of how this is going to impact all of us as consumers down the line. So hear what I have to say, take it into consideration. So Microsoft putting their games on PlayStation 5 is actually a very smart thing for Microsoft to do since they're in this loser's position. They are currently the largest video game publisher on the planet. And maybe they even want to grow more. Who knows what other acquisitions they're looking to do. So what they want to do, as any business normally does, is make money. And if they're not making as much money as they want by selling things on Xbox or through Game Pass or on PC, how can they increase the money they make? Well, just release the products on PlayStation. Sure, with a delay, it's not going to come out day and date for now. It's not very different from how Sony handles their own exclusive releasing on PC. It's just more money that you can make by putting it on another platform. But PC is kind of its own special case. So the big optics situation that goes on here is you can play Starfield and probably Indiana Jones and Sea of Thieves on your PlayStation, but you can't play Marvel Spider-Man 2 on your Xbox. And you probably never will which paints a very clear winners and losers type of situation. But really, if you're the biggest video game publisher on the planet and what you want to sell is games and subscriptions, it makes sense for them to do this. I just think it's a very bad move when it comes to consumers and not because of like people who support Xbox and feel betrayed or something, but for the future future of games. So first, let's talk about what Microsoft's position would be within the market, because obviously it's going to continue to be a loser's position if they do this. It's not quite something like accepting defeat, it's just looking for a different way to leverage what they have, right? Because while Microsoft is 100% losing, they really don't ever have to admit defeat. Uh, they have a lot of money. <laughs> if they just wanted to pursue this because they want to, they could just throw money at it forever and that'd be the end of it. But obviously they want to make money. So what is the position that this puts them in? Well, it's that big game provider. We just make a lot of games and you can get them wherever you want, but it still presents Microsoft as having a distinct advantage over Sony in a way that I think is actually quite clever. I'm, this is not in my, in my notes. I'm literally realizing this right now that what they want is to sell Game Pass. If a ton of people start buying the Microsoft games on PlayStation, three Microsoft games are basically the price of a Series S. And you can get a Series S and Game Pass for the same price. Right? They're still incentivizing in a way that, hey, if you like these games, be aware that there are ways that you can get into the ecosystem, into Game Pass to play this and a ton more for cheap, which I think is where they're headed. They just want to sell all sorts of games. I do not think, very, this is very personal, it's not based on any objective evidence, 
but Microsoft will continue to sell consoles, but it's not going to be as the way they compete with Sony. Instead, these consoles are going to be kind of like how Amazon sells you a fire stick, but they also sell a million other devices kind of like that. Xbox is going to say, hey, you can use our services on a ton of stuff, but also you can buy our own box that does it. And it comes with its own specific benefits if this is the reason that you want to use one of those devices. And I think that's kind of smart for them because they're going to make money on every single sale, on every single subscription, and they're going to keep making those games that they'd like to make. I think things like the Series S are often treated with not the respect that they should be, though. I know that within the hardcore gamer audience, the Series S is a joke and people talk about it like it's holding back games and the new generation. But the truth is that as a product, I think it's really smart and hasn't had the success that I would expect from it on paper. I don't know if that's from marketing or why, but if you think about it, the Series S is a very cheap box with very adequate performance that gets you into Game Pass. If you're a very casual player, you don't dedicate a lot of time into gaming, you don't want to spend a lot of money on it, or if you're a dad or a mom with a couple of kids that just want to play games, you want to give them a game console, you know, um, in that territory, I guess they're getting eaten up by Nintendo like everybody, but if you wanted to give them the home console experience or a more next-gen type of feel, Getting a Series S and a subscription to Game Pass is, is like the best value you can get in gaming. Sure, not for us, not for probably you watching this video and me, but I think that for a very large amount of people out there, it is a very uh, juicy proposal. Is kind of a good test area for what I think Microsoft is aiming for if they do go ahead and just start putting all of their games out on PlayStation. All of this is to say that Microsoft isn't going anywhere. They're still the largest game publisher technically developer, right, in the world. And they still want to offer products for that host, that stable of different things that they offer, but they want to maximize their revenue streams. So they're just going to take the L and say, hey, we're putting it on PlayStation because that gives us more money. At the end of the day, this isn't a bad thing for the majority of gamers in itself. I, it's actually very good on paper, right? More games available on more places means less limitations for people to enjoy games. As a PC gamer, primarily, you know that I champion this idea very strongly. But it does come with some significant downsides. Sure, if you're into hardcore gaming, this means that Sony will, as it still is, be the best platform for you to go for. You're going to have the most amount of games, both Sony's exclusives and down the line Xbox's exclusives, which is something that Xbox can't claim the other way around. But that also means that they just de facto have the market leader position when it comes to this sector of console gaming because i mean nintendo is nintendo we can't talk about nintendo just like pc is a weird thing like these things are meant to be separate really the war has always been xbox and playstation we have seen time and time again from both of these companies that when they are in a market leader position they do stuff that is not good for the average consumer, for the average gamer. The PlayStation 3's ridiculous price and hard to develop for architecture was something that Sony had to eat when a lot of people jumped from a PS2 to an Xbox 360. And a lot of the things that Xbox got to implement as market leader were then contested by Sony when it came to the PS4. Paying for playing online? No, you don't do that on a PS3. Uh, your games being licenses that you can't share, you can't just lend a game to a friend? Nah, PS4 doesn't do that. So when Microsoft got too high and mighty with their position in the market on the 360 side, the PS4 came in to chop down the Xbox One's plans that people didn't like. And these are just some very quick examples, but there's a ton of small stuff from pricing of games to the services you offered to the prices on the stores, there's so many things that the back and forth has been kept in check by the competition between the two. Because when there is no competition, well, you can just do whatever you want and nobody can contest you. Nobody can say that's bad because then you can answer, well, it's us or nobody, right? Right now, that's kind of happening with things like game prices. In a lot of the world, game prices are $70 American in the standard and then change for the regional pricing. But in Europe, We've seen many countries officially raise the recommended retail price coming from Sony and from Microsoft to 80 euro, which 
makes no sense. The euro is worth more than the dollar. <laughs> so they're just ridiculously expensive. But certain things like Game Pass do combat this because while Indiana Jones might come out for 80 euros, it's also just on Game Pass. And Microsoft is doing other things like selling Hellblade 2 Senua Saga for around 40 to $50 according to them because it goes more in line with what they think the game offers content-wise, which is something I don't think I would ever see Sony doing. No Man's Sky was 60 bucks on release. That was a big surprise to a lot of people, right? And if there is no direct competition, we will still head in down the same direction always. Both of them really want to do the bad stuff. When Sony said that they weren't gonna do digital licenses and that you could just share your games physically, that's not what they want. If they want to make the most money, Xbox's system was better. But because Sony existed to say, well, we're not going to do it now, right? Xbox had to pull back as well. If at that moment, Xbox was the only console that mattered on the market and they did that, you, we would just have to eat it up. It's like the same thing with something like Apple. Apple, we always make jokes about how Apple does not update their phones very meaningfully year to year, only sometimes do we get a big leap, but it would be even less if they didn't have tons of competition from like three, four other very big brands that come out with their new flagship phones and follow that entire cycle. If there weren't videos with millions and millions of views comparing every detail of these phones and the cameras and all of these things year after year with every flagship, there would be no incentive for Apple to improve. If that competition weren't there, they would just sell you the same phone for the same price year after year. That is just how the market works. And as much as Xbox's consoles might not be going anywhere, and it's not a question of Sony being bad, I really want to stress that. Both of them, anyone actually, absolute power corrupts absolutely. If there is no competition, if there is no other option for consumers, you can do with consumers whatever you want. You can offer them as much trash and push as many negative practices, price points, services, whatever. And nobody can stop you because there's not going to be a competitor saying, well, we're not going to do that. And then the consumers choose that by buying that product instead of the other one. That's what's happened over and over again. That's what happened with the 360 and then the PS4. Just to put it into recent times, right? That is very scary to me. I do not like it. I do not like what that control of the console market can lead to, especially when you start talking about what ramifications it could have on things like the PC market. So for as much as we can meme about Microsoft losing and man, PlayStation gamers now get access to Starfield <laughs> as a person with a PC and a PlayStation. If you haven't played Starfield, you're only on PlayStation. Please do not be excited about this. <laughs> Please do your research before you buy the game. This isn't just something you download on Game Pass and try out on PlayStation. You're going to have to put up the money. Think about this one carefully, PlayStation Nation. Please. But yeah, for as much as we can meme about the situation and Microsoft loses and long live Sony or whatever, Microsoft isn't going anywhere. They're pursuing a very different strategy that could end up being very bad. We'll talk about the sustainability of Game Pass and subscription services in gaming later on. Right now, I still think Game Pass is an excellent value for money for many, many people. But while they're pursuing that, Sony's going to get free reign of the console market if this really goes through. Not complete. It's still going to be timed exclusives, but definitely a bad sign for the console market in the dominance of Sony, because that is scary. And you should be aware of it, that not all that shimmers is gold and only shooting stars break the mold. So I hope that explains kind of the situation where we might be headed and what you should be aware of. I've been Mug Thief. If you like this video, hit the like button. That way it reaches more people so that they are better informed consumers, hopefully. Remember to subscribe. It means way more than you imagine. And thank you all for the support. Thank you for watching. And as always, I'll see you very soon.